Good morning, everybody. We're a couple of days late with the release, but it's here. We now have the latest release of the beta for um, Behringer's MX Mix. We're going to have a look and see what they've added or taken away. And uh, there's a couple things they've asked us to test. So we're going to really quickly pop through that and we're going to do it right now. Let's go. So let's open up MX Mix. It's gonna look for my console and there it is, found it pretty quick. Okay, so uh, you can see on my other screen here, there's a list of things they want us to test. Um, first and foremost, the mute solo switch user interface changes. So actually down at the left on the screen here, the little MS button, which I thought in the initial release might've been like a mute all or a solo all. Um, it looks like it actually just switches between the mute and solo buttons. Um, so that appears to work. Let's just make sure it mutes and unmutes. Appears to. Solo appears to be working as well. You should see this mirrored on the old software I have on my computer screen. Uh, let's really quickly do this on all the channels. Oops, let's go back and just turn those off. Mute. Keep forgetting I have ganged channels here. Oops. Aux, aux mute. So it looks like the mutes and solos are working on everything so far. So far, so good. I'm not gonna make you watch me do all of this. So let's just jump back to the main page. Um, what else do they want us to do? Touch target on entire fader track to move fader on home and meter screen. Ah, okay, so this is a cool feature that I was hoping they would add. Some of you probably won't like this because yes, there is the potential for making an error when you're live, but also when you're live, I think this is really handy to have. And that is, look, you can grab you're not seeing me. I'm going to change my camera here. Actually, I'm just going to turn it off face tracking. Oops, if I can. There we go. I'm just going to put it down so you can see that I'm grabbing. I'm grabbing the fader, not on the actual. Oops, there we go. Not on the actual fader, but anywhere on the channel. And that's allowing me to move my fader up and down. I think that is very handy to have. Um, I will say it's not an immediate reaction. It takes a fraction of a second before it registers that you're touching it, which is probably good because it means I can't accidentally swipe something. Um, but having the ability to drag that fader from anywhere on the channel, I think is amazing. Um, so that seems to be working. I will keep checking it on all other um, pages, but specifically they said on the home and the meter screen. So let's jump to the meter screen and this is going to be very difficult to do. So that doesn't appear to be working on the meter screen unless they meant somewhere else. But right now I am only able to grab right on the actual fader. If I don't grab on the actual fader, if I just grab somewhere on the channel, it does not appear to be doing anything unless they met somewhere else. Um, you can check everything here on the meters page, but no dice. So if that's what they meant, um, that part is not functioning yet, which is a shame, but I do really like that it's working on the home channel. I think that's an incredible addition. Um, visual feedback for channel layer bank. I am not sure what they mean here. Um, just change a couple of things and see what comes up. Just change some names here, some colors. Um, that appears to be working. I'm not sure what else they mean by visual feedback unless they're talking about, um, you know, seeing these numbers here when we are raising the fader, which could very well be. 
visual feedback for channel layer bank. Everything seems to be doing what it's supposed to. All modals will close on tap. That I have no idea what it means. <clears throat> um, and I wish I had some further information on that because I'm not sure how to test something when I don't know what they're talking about. So let's jump to the next one. Uh, mini panner should be adjustable and reset with double tap. That's cool if it works. So that is our little pan, um, our little pan icons above each channel here. So let's see if we can drag it. We can, I believe we could do that before, but what they're saying is that it should go back to center if I double tap it. And it did. So that's great. Those are the things they wanted us to test um, to make sure there's no bugs. Obviously, it looks like the uh, touch target anywhere on the channel strip is not working on the meters page, so I'll let them know that. But in the meantime, I'm going to continue messing around with this, and if I find anything that isn't working, I'm going to let them know, but I'll let you know too. Hopefully, I can figure out what modals are and what they're talking about for feedback on the channel layer bank. And when I have that info, I'll bring it to you in a, a supplementary video. But anyway, this is what we're seeing for the latest release. I think we're still a long way off from an actual official release. Um, and I know you're gonna say there's not a lot that's changed here, but there were bugs that needed to be worked out. So they've spent a lot of time getting rid of bugs because it looks like everything is pretty stable. Um, you know what, let me do um, a disconnect. And I wonder if I can do a manual. Let's see, 192.168.1.15, I believe it was. Um, confirm. That's not doing anything, unless I was wrong and it's not. Oh, it's 0 0.15, my bad. So let's do 0 0.15 and close that, confirm. Okay, so that's working too. Um, so far, so good. Yeah, I know you're going to say not a lot has changed, but they did spend a lot of time on bugs, and bugs take up a lot of time, um, especially when there's hundreds of people testing this and sending in feedback about different things. It takes a team quite a while to get through those items. And, you know, they've added this touch target on the channel strip, faders which I think is really cool so you know don't be all up in arms that they haven't done very much because I think they've probably done quite a bit here it's a slow process and uh you know thanks for being patient and staying on the ride with me for those of us who really want this to come out well on the other side I know it's it's a bit of a struggle to wait but um I think it'll be great just to have a working app whether you choose to use it in the end or not I don't know I mean mixing station is a really great alternative um, I'm doing some videos on mixing station. If you haven't seen them, you should check them out. They're, they're really for the newbies, not for those of you who know how to use it already. But I just think it's great for them to have a working app that is native to the console and free for everybody to have. So, you know, like I said, it's taking a while, but patience is a virtue, so they say. So let's stick with it. So that's it for today. Thanks for joining me to have a look at this next release of the beta for MX Mix. I'll keep you as up to date as I can. As soon as I've got info, you'll have info. And I hope this was entertaining, educational, um, useful. If any of those things, you know, please like, share, subscribe, all the normal stuff. Check us out on Patreon. And until next time, thanks for watching here on Quick and Easy Quickies.